Hello, this is Bini here. Today in this tutorial, I wanted to talk about support resistance. This is the fundamental of all trading strategy. This topic has been very well covered in other YouTube tutorials, but I thought that I wanted to just look at it in another way because even when such a simple concept, when it comes to real execution, when you look at the chart, it's really tough because we can only see support resistance when something has already happened, something has already moved. I'm going to incorporate these three steps for you to see support resistance easily. And with these three steps, confidence that you'll be able, able to handle any form of analysis. And I shared with you six tips that you wish that you've known earlier. So these are tips that I teach my students and they find that it is really very useful. And especially tip number six, it is a must if you are doing stocks. This will also explain why, for example, Nvidia exploded 185% in less than six months. Tip number six is the reason why Nvidia stopped there and from there exploded 185%. If you'd like to know more, please remember Remember to watch till the very end. If you like this video, remember along the way, anytime that you've liked this content and you love whatever that I'm saying, please click the like button and please subscribe to the channel so I can move on to the next module and the many more modules to come. Let's take a look at the most simplest way to understand support and resistance. To the left side, I have written down what is a support. Now, support is a zone of demand. Demand means that people are looking to buy. When are people looking to buy? People are looking to buy when it is a low. Therefore, support is likely to be a low point. It's likely to be a flaw. Now, let's take a look at the example here. As price moves up, it hit a high point when it price starts to move down see that this is a low point and subsequently price moves up and therefore we can conclude that this is a zone of support why because people are looking to buy and the buy action resulted in price to go up now why is it that it is going up that's because it's the zone of low point and that's because it is near to a floor and when there's a near to a floor there's demand and therefore price goes up and therefore this becomes a support level let's take a look at resistance it is likely to be a place where there's selling activity why because there's supply the supply comes in to sell because it is near the high when it's near the high it resemble a ceiling so let's take a look at the diagram below as price moves up it hit into a high point so therefore this is likely to be a resistance because they are selling pressure to cause it to come down now why is it that people are looking to sell because it is near the high and price hit a ceiling people are selling and we can conclude that this is a resistance very likely support would be areas where it is a low you are going to associate support with a buy activity and support is likely to be a zone of demand now when you take a look at resistance it is likely to be a high there would be selling activity here because it is likely to be a zone of supply that's simply what is support and resistance in looking at prices especially when you are either trading or investing it is very important to take note of support and resistance because this is like the father of trading the father of investing now you know why is support resistance let me share with you the first tip and the most important thing about drawing support resistance it must be drawn on completed turning points this is a very important point to take note now what is the meaning of turning point let me just illustrate this to you for example do you think that this is a completed turning point? Well, you might think so, but sometimes when price move, it might be that it comes here and then it goes up. So therefore, this point here will not be a turning point. So let me just ask you another one. Is this a turning point? I think that you would say, yes, this is a turning point because this point here looks like a mountain, looks like a inverted U shape. So therefore, for turning point to identify, let's say, a support resistance, you must be able to spot this as a turning point. It must be drawn on confirmed turning point. For example, this will be a resistance and a confirmed turning point will resemble that of a U shape. That would be your support here. Therefore, to repeat this, it must be drawn on completed turning point and it must resemble either a mountain here, which is for your resistance, or either a valley here, 
which is for your support. Now you know why is support resistance and you have the first tip which is to draw on completed turning point. I'm going to illustrate with Microsoft on how to draw the support resistance in and to give you the second tip. Sometimes a lot of beginners when they learn support resistance they have a problem finding turning point. It will be so much easier if you switch that into a line chart. Yes, by switching your graph into a line chart you can find the turning point so much easier. For example, it's easy to spot that this is a mountain which is a likely resistance here and then this is another mountain, another mountain, also another resistance and that's another mountain, another mountain here. Right, let's move on to the support. Here would be your valley, that's your support, that's your support, that would be a support, a support and a valley here, that's a support and then this will be a valley. After you have completed with the identification of turning points, now we need to place in horizontal levels to draw in our support resistance. I'm just going to place it here, for example at the high and another one more value which is at the low. Now but you can't use the lines that's being drawn on the low or high on the line chart. You have to switch that into a candlestick chart to get an exact value. Switch that into a candlestick chart you realize that where you see this high value here which resemble like a mountain the line that you've drawn based on the line chart didn't really stick to the highest point now we need to make adjustment to this line you're gonna park it to the highest point that you see around this mountain likewise for your valley you're gonna shift this line to the lowest point that you see at the valley here that means you need to make adjustment let's say for example I'm gonna draw another one more resistance level here which is at the high point like the mountain I have to switch that into a candlestick chart and then adjust this line to the highest point that I see now you will have your two resistance and you have your one support underneath it might be good also to label your resistance or to make some color adjustment to your support or resistance to identify that they are support or resistance for example i like to make my resistance as a red color and i like to make my support as a green color so i have two resistance and i have one support here the next support resistance concept which I like to talk about that support resistance can interchange. Now this means that a support can become a resistance or a resistance can become a support. Now let's try to understand this from this building here. Now I have a building and at the bottom would be your floor. That's the ground floor. And on top here would be this unbreakable material which is your very strong ceiling. However, let's say for example you are standing here on the floor and then you happen to be like a superman or superwoman and you can fly. You manage to fly from this floor and all the way to the ceiling. This ceiling here would be immediately your resistance and imagine that you can break above the ceiling and you continue to move up beyond the first floor ceiling to the second floor ceiling. Now the second floor ceiling is very strong for the moment. Now what will happen? This would be your resistance and then you're going to find that price is going to drop or you're going to drop, right? And you're going to drop. Once you drop, the first floor ceiling that was your resistance now will become the support because then it will be the second floor floor that's where at the second floor that will be demand coming in and becomes your support so therefore a previous resistance that's happened previously on the first floor will now becomes your support now let's say for example it bounced off and it moved through to the resistance and this time around you're able to break that resistance and it moved but once you hit the third level that's where you're going to find that there's resistance again because it's again another ceiling. You're going to drop or price is going to drop and your second floor ceiling right now will become your floor. That's where it's going to become your support. Now these will continue on and continue to hit the resistance at the first story and then it's going to come back down here until it reaches this very strong unbreakable material and that's where maybe you find that price will really topple from here right now what is this concept about it means that previously a previous resistance can become a support 
or a previous support can become a resistance. So these will be in the chain. Now, one special tip for you is that while this in the chain support resistance is quite easy to apply because then you know it's very visual, but if you have a stock or price movement that's generally up trend that means that generally it is going up then the previous resistance is very likely going to become a strong support that means that this resistance is likely going to become your support a resistance is likely to be a support rather than the previous support becoming a support Right. So this is a very important concept because you want that in an upward movement, the resistance to first become a support to establish that this is a strong uptrend. You don't want that price to break below this resistance, which is the first support and to move to the second support. Now, likewise, for example, you have price moving in a downtrend, then the stronger resistance would be given by the previous support here that means that you want this previous supports to act as the first resistance rather than the resistance to become a resistance now why is that so because if price continue to move up and it move beyond the previous support that is right now acting at the resistance and then it move to the next resistance that means that the first level of resistance, which is given by this support, has been broken. In other words, whoever is going to buy this movement up, they are able to break above the support and to move until the next resistance. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a like? Let's take a look at Tesla and to apply what we've learned so far, especially with the interchangeable support and resistance. First, we switch the line chart. There's the high here and the high here, and then you have another some low here, low here, and low here, and you have another one point here, which is a high. How do I know that this high is going to be a resistance? Or how do I know that this high is going to be a strong resistance? Let's apply the concept of interchange support and resistance. Right now, I'm going to draw the line. For example, I'm just going to draw some horizontal lines here. Some of the horizontal lines that I see. And then some here. And with this, I will be switching that into a candlestick chart. Now, with candlestick chart, it's easy to realize that this line here, which I'm going to mark it in a blue color, it was a previous support. That's a previous support here. And right now, this previous support in the change to become a resistance. So that's your resistance. Now, in fact, that with Tesla right now, price had broken above this interchangeable support and resistance, isn't it? All right, here's the support and resistance level. And since right now, Tesla had moved above an immediate resistance level the next resistance level which is the key level would be somewhere around here you realize that in order to find the current support or resistance level i always look to the left we come to the next tip is that if you want to find the resistance that's current that means you want to see whatever that's happened on the right hand side of your chart you always look to the left that means that you want to know what's happening right here you have to see the left. That's always the rule to it. Right? We used historical price level or whatever that happens historically to predict into the current price. Now, these are logical price level. Why was that so? Because we assume that human psychology would be the same over time. At places where we saw a high, we're going to see a high right now. The third concept which we're going to cover, which is the last concept of support resistance, is how do you know that the support resistance is strong, which is the strength. The theory would be the more touches, the stronger the support resistance. What is the meaning of touches? The more highs or low this particular support resistance is made up of, then the stronger you will be. Let's take a look to the left side example where we have a U-shape, which is the low. This particular support, which I'm going to draw, will be made up of one touch, just one low. Whereas to the resistance here, this is made up of two touches. 
that's too high. So which is stronger? Is it the support or is it the resistance? Yes, you are right. It's the resistance that would be stronger. So this is definitely stronger than the first one. Take a look at the diagram to the right hand side. I have here where we have one, two lows here, and we have the third one, which is the high and a fourth high and a fifth. And I'll be able to draw in a line that was a support now in the change to become a resistance. Question to you, how many touches are there? There would be five touches here. This would be a much stronger support or resistance line than versus the one with two touches and versus the one with one touch. If we assume that price again would be going up, then definitely price would be facing a very strong resistance up. Here. Let's take a look at this stock here, Singtel, to illustrate the strength of support resistance. If you take a look at the left, and of course, then we switch that into a line chart and try to identify the number of touches we have here, potentially a strong resistance. Why do I think that? You know, we look at the highs and low, that's about the same high. So that's about high here, and then this one is about another one more high here. So that's basically about three touches, and if I want to just be a little bit more detailed, I would be looking at this as another one more touch, and I look somewhere to the left, and perhaps, right, this low could be acting as a possible support that turns into a resistance. I'm just going to switch that into a candlestick chart and try to draw in a line, perhaps right, this line here. You realize that by drawing this line, then I would have here, which is about one touch, two, then that's three, and maybe near here, this is a four. So this resistance here at about 285, around there would be given by four touches over a period of three, four years. Let's take a look at the bottom here and I think that there might be another a support here. Why do I say that? Let's try to visualize a little bit by shifting the line and to change this into a green color to represent that it is a support. Now here would have near to one touch, two, three, and four so that's also a strong support level here so this is how easily you can identify your support and resistance now one more tip for you one more tip before we come towards the end of the lesson is that how far back should you be looking at your support resistance actually we prefer to look for support resistance that's more recent I repeat, that's most recent. Why is that so? Because of this concept called recency effect. People tend to remember things that happened recently than things that happened many, many years or decades ago. If you can find support resistance that's in the past three to four years, that would be really, really very good already. Now, if you have a look in the same tail, and I shift back a little bit, I'll be able to find, for example, the green level here was a support level, but that's probably a support level in 2008, 2006. That's really like very long time ago. But the red line here, that's about 285, was also another one more zone of a low here and that's like 2011 yes it's long ago but you know we just add on to the number of touches because when we consider this we consider the recent three to four years and we already have four touches and this is already a good enough price level for us to consider that as a resistance don't go away remember to watch towards the end because i'm going to give you one final tip if you are trading stocks if you like the lesson so far to help to click a thumbs up like so that more people can be pushed with the content and please remember to subscribe because i'll be launching the next full tutorial that's on priced action we are at the last part of today's tutorial and this is what i promised you i'll be giving you you that very very special tip the strong support or resistance level that I always use whether it is for stocks or for forex or commodity or whether it is for US stocks Singapore stocks Hong Kong stocks or anywhere in the world it's applicable let's take a look at Nvidia is a hot stocks is a hot AI stocks right now in the mid of 2023 and have you wonder why from this point here price shot up 
and move all the way to the high and it was a gorgeous 185% movement from the low. Why is it that price decided to stop here and to move up from here? What is magical at this point here? Have you ever thought about that? Okay, let me just show you some lines. The lines I'm going to show you would be a 52 weeks high. Remember I talked about when price moves up in an uptrend situation, then the previous resistance will right now become a very important support. Right, so this is a concept that I mentioned just now. Likewise, have you ever wondered why for stocks, they are able to break above that 52 weeks high, which is 52 weeks would be one year. So that would, would be one year high. Now that's because a stocks fundamentally was very strong and it was able to push through a one year high. Breaking through that one year high is a very important milestone for the stocks. If price ever retrace back or come back to that one year high, that would be a very strong support level. Let's take a look at Nvidia right now. So this was that one year high so that's the one year high because one box is equal to one year and from here price broke through it went up price right now retrace back to this level hover for a while and it comes back up now not only that you realize let me just clean my chart now, not only that, you realize that the 52 weeks low was also very important. Not only a 52 weeks high, so this was the 52 weeks high and this one was the 52 weeks low. So that's a high point. So this is a low point. Now, when price move here, it stopped near to the high. Yes, indeed, and bounce up, but it also retested the low. Previous 52 weeks high or previous 52 weeks low, when price hover around here, it becomes a very, very strong level for you to watch for reaction. And what kind of reaction are you looking at? Mm, that's where we have to move to the second module and we'll be talking about price action. I'll be launching this module very soon. Remember to subscribe so that you'll be notified about this module. I will be doing this module once we hit a certain milestone to share with you how I exactly look into the price action whenever they are near to this 52 weeks high or 52 weeks low. Right, with this, I'll be doing a summary on what we've learned so far. Let's do a summary of today's lesson. We learned that a high is likely to be where there's supply, likely to be selling, and therefore these will be a resistance. Whereas a low is likely to be where there's demand and then this would be a point of buying and this would be where there's support. Now we also learned that support resistance can interchange. A previous resistance can in turn become your support if it is broken. Lastly, we also learned that if you have only one touch, this is going to be weaker than versus if you have multiple touches like this. That's the key concept of support resistance. Let's move on to the tips. I shared a total of six tips with you. Let's revise on the six tips. You always, always draw support resistance on completed turning points. Switch to a line chart if you can't see the turning points line chart and color your support as green and your resistance as red. Look left to find historical price level because you want to see what's at the right side. You always look to the left. Number five, focus on more recent support resistance. And number six, the amazing, wonderful prices actions will happen near to 52 weeks high or low, especially when stocks are moving in and up trend. Remember, 52 weeks high low. Again, if you like my tutorial, I'm so grateful if you can give a thumbs up and then to subscribe to the channel because then I'll be doing a lot more other tutorials for you and give me a comment on what you think about the tutorial and what you would like to learn from my tutorial. And lastly, what do you think of my handwriting?